with the with the capacity of our equipment, it gives you the ability to be able to lift the return belt whilst lifting the trough belt as well. So we'll show you how we connect our return belt beam to our trough beam. We have return belt lugs on each trough beam that we mount our shackles on. Make sure they're secured. Now, when we're working on a return belt, if we're looking to change out a return idler, and we're not actually looking to lift the trough beam, we want to gain as much lift as we possibly can. So how do we go about that? We lift our return belt to a point that it's connected with the return belt. The actual beam is connected to the return belt. That, that allows us, due to the fact that we have this capacity in the belt and, and from our trough beam, it will start lifting the return belt before it's lifting the trough belt. That'll increase the lifting capacity that we can create on our return belt. So please make sure that we always choke up the chain nice and tied up against the return belt before lifting the return belt. One of the key safety points that we'd like to bring up which is working on incline conveyor systems. When we're working on an incline of 18 degrees, uh, gravity will, will allow the chains to hang the angle that they want to, meeting gra working with gravity. When we're working with gravity with chains like that and we take our load, the pendulum of the foot up the top here, well, it could, could pull the belt lifter over. So what we ask is, is that as we're coming up onto the return belt, that we pull the chains in perpendicular with the telescope, keeping the chain within the fulcrum of the foot. If that chain is hanging outside of the fulcrum of the foot, it has a chance of pulling the belt lifter over. If we keep the chain inside of the fulcrum of the foot, the width of the foot, we have no chance of pulling the belt lifter.